My name is Denisha Horton and I am 38 years old. I was 28. Um, it was February of 2013 when I had my first symptom and it was a lump under my arm. I went to shave and it was a huge lump there that wasn't there the night before. It was just a lump there. Mm -hmm. And then after the lump, it became a series of things that started happening, but I never had any pains. I started noticing a few weeks after that, my right nipple started spreading fluid. Mm -hmm. um, it would shrivel up. And at first, because I was trying for pregnancy, we thought like maybe I was pregnant and I was like pre-lactating of some sort. So it was kind of exciting. So I ignored the lump, but then I knew that it potentially, you know, it probably wasn't that, that I, it was something more, which is why I ignored it for so long. I found it in February. I didn't go to the doctor until August of 2013. So the initial appointment when I went, um, they felt the lump. They thought, uh, it's, it could be something, but they tried not to alert me as much. So then they sent me for a biopsy. Um, I went for the biopsy like a week later. And from that point, in that process, I was already going through another tragic situation. So I went by myself because I wanted to know by myself without anyone else. Um, they did the biopsy. And before I could even finish the biopsy, the doctor told me that she speculated that it was potentially cancer. She just didn't know what type or what stage it was. Mm -hmm. Like I was just blowed, mm -hmm. but I was not surprised mm -hmm. um, because cancer runs in my family. So I was not shocked at all, but I didn't have time to really process it 100% at that moment. So it took me a second. So I was like, okay, what next? What are we doing? That was my next thought. It was the following week. Mm -hmm. um, they called me the following week. They told me they needed me to come in. I was gonna see, I guess she would be like my liaison for everything going forward. Um, when I came to her office, she had like a whole bag full of gifts and books and things she wanted to give me. And she just kind of told me, she said, okay, so this is your results. This is what we found. And you know, we wanna get started immediately. Your cancer's very aggressive and we're concerned. I asked her to leave the room for a second because I needed to sit by myself for a second and process it. So she stepped out. I didn't call anybody. I didn't say anything to anybody. I just sat there and I was like, here we go. And then she came, I had her come back in and we just, from that point, it was like, so what's my next appointment? What are you thinking? What do we need to do? What are my options? And just started game planning what I needed to do. I had stage two, um, excuse me, stage three breast cancer, but it was HER2 positive, which was a rare cancer at that time. It was new. Mm -hmm. They hadn't really seen it. Only thing was it wasn't a double positive, so that was a good thing, but it was stage three and the mass was extremely large. Um, it went from, I believe they said the top from like under my arms down to under the bottom and it had actually spread to my lymph nodes which was a concern because then that means it could spread to the rest of my body. Six rounds of chemo, uh, aggressive. It was five medicines, five different medicines, two of which did not hit the market till October 1st of 2013. And I was to do six rounds every three weeks. I only did four, <laughs> I quit. I realized that I know my body better than they know my body. And I couldn't keep allowing them to give me something without checking me. I asked them multiple times after like the first and second rounds of medicine because I was so sick to check my mask, had it shrunk, let's see where it is. Um, the doctor I had at the time, I was at OU Medical Facility in Oklahoma City. It's a teaching hospital. They study a lot, they do a lot. So some of the things I was going through were a little experimental too. And that's why I asked them to check. They wouldn't check anything. They were like, oh, we'll get to it, we get, we'll get to it. Um, it wasn't until like my third, fourth treatment that I found out that the amount of medicine they were giving me was wrong. It was based on the size of someone that was 155 pounds. And at that time I was 95 pounds. So at that time, after being in the hospital I, for the fourth go around for 10 days, I called my mom and told her that was it. She needed to come get me. I couldn't do it anymore. So I quit. They knew, um, I called, so after I kind of processed everything, um, like I said, I was at the time I was dealing with another tragedy that was going on and kind of pushed that to the side for a second. I did call my mom, I let her know, and I told my sisters, um, of course, I told my friends, and I think the hardest part was because I was at a distance and 
no one could get to me to be there to help me. Um, I only had about one person there who actually was there for me. And to this day, I probably owe her my life. I do, her and her husband. And she did everything with me. Up until the day I left, she was there. She did everything with me. So I went to Duke Cancer Center. I saw Dr. Markham, he was my oncologist. Dr. George A was my surgeon. Um, they tested me, they did several scans and found that the mass was actually gone. It was it had been gone and I didn't need to do any more treatment. What I had to do from that point was surgery and radiation for six weeks. I'm glad I made the decision because when I came home and went to do everything I asked for to be done, they did it, no questions asked, didn't give me any pushback about anything. So when they initially, we started the treatment planning for my treatments, what I had going on, um, and at OU, I had made a decision to have a double mastectomy off the gate. Um, I was told, you're too young, why would you do that? Just, you know, but knowing that my grandmother had cancer, um, my three of my great aunts had it, they passed away from it. I wasn't gonna run the risk of having cancer again because I wanted to keep one more breast. I was young enough to where they could do the implants and whoever going down the line, marriage wise, dating wise, couldn't accept it, then that's just what it was. But I did a double mastectomy. Um, once I got there, they got me pretty much in the system at Duke, figured out what the plan of action was. I had surgery the week before Valentine's Day in 2014. Um, they did the double mastectomy. They actually, no, they took one breast. They took the right breast. It wasn't until a year later, almost, they took the left breast. They let me heal first and they put in expanders and took the left breast at the same time. Um, when I made the choice, anybody who knows me, I'm, I'm flying off the handle. I'm gonna make the most probably rational, but it's gonna be what most people probably wouldn't do because I know that's what's, what's gonna make sense in the long run. But it was a little bit of a struggle. Dating is a struggle because having one breast versus two, um, but I wore it with confidence. I never wanted to wear a prosthetic bra. And sometimes it did bother me. I look in the mirror and I'm like, uh, but then I have to remember it like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's either you want me or you don't want me. I did lose a couple friends over the process because they said things about me behind my back with not wearing a prosthetic breast, things like that. And it sucked because these are people, you know, that you think are in your corner. Um, people would stare at me sometimes, you know, but I didn't let it stop me. Like, no matter what, I just did. I wore bathing suits. I did whatever it was that made me feel comfortable. And I think that's what made other people comfortable because I was okay. And I openly talk about it, so I was okay. So, in the beginning, my support was very sketchy. Um, my support was me and everyone, my friends and family here at home at a distance. Text messages, calls. But the support I had came from, um, like I said, the family in Oklahoma that was there for me, who did everything they possibly could for me. They kept my mom in the loop of things. They just, every doctor's appointment, everything that went on with myself and my son, they showed up for him too, because I had my son with me too, and he was 13 going through this process with me. He would stay out of school sometimes because he didn't want me at the hospital by myself and just sit with me because he was worried about me. And I didn't want him missing days, but he was worried. And it was just he and I. Um, but coming home was the best decision I made because I instantly healed emotionally and physically because I had my friends and my family. Like the second day I was home, all my friends came over and just sat. And over the weeks, everybody just wants to come by, want to hang out, they want to do something. And I feel like that's what healed me the most, getting back to my regular life and not sitting around moping about what it was before that. I don't think, I never questioned why it was happening to me. I just knew it was a matter of time. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, with having family members that went through what they went through already with cancer, my grandmother, who I was really close to having cancer, I just, I felt like it was gonna happen. Just when was it gonna happen? What was gonna happen? And I was also in the realization that sometimes people go through things and it's not for them. I don't believe I went through cancer for me. I believe I went through it for someone else's healing, whoever that may be or whatever it is they needed to see. Maybe they needed to see somebody be okay with it because they had their own stuff going on. So I've never questioned 
why God, why did this happen to me? Um, it just sucks sometimes how sick I was and what I had to go through to get to the point that I'm at now. Um, it changed. Well, so I tend to diagnose myself a lot about <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I always know what's wrong before anybody else does. But going to the doctor, not procrastinating like I did. I knew what was wrong when I saw the lump and I should have dealt with it then. And I didn't. It potentially could have only been stage one then. And I may not have had to have the drastic transition I did. However, it's, it's taught me just go to the doctor, get it over with. Whether it's good news, bad news or not, just, just deal with it for what it is. Cause sometimes I just don't want to deal with it. So I would say go to the doctor, definitely go good or bad. Don't worry about the financial costs. There are programs, cause I know there, that's why some people don't go to the doctor because the financial things, they don't have the money, they don't have health insurance. There are programs that will help you, that will keep you afloat. You just have to do the research and find somebody, you know, that will do it. Um, I guess, you know, it's just, everybody goes through something for a reason. So when you're going through your, your situation, cancer or whatever it may be, find what it is that you're supposed to learn from it rather than looking at it like a hard thing figure out what am i supposed to be learning from this what is the point of this because there is a reason you just got to figure out what it is and not be so shaded or feel so angry about what you're going through um you show up by period just showing up just being there it doesn't matter if they don't want you there it doesn't matter if they talk junk to you go in the other room and sit on the sofa there you know just be there in general and never take away them feeling like a human. People, when you're sick, you just want to feel like yourself, like a human. You want to not feel helpless. Let them do whatever it is they feel like they still need to do. You just be there to support them if they fall or if they can't reach it or if they're just too sick. Just sit, just be there. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's just all we honestly want. When I was sick, I wanted to go to work. I knew I shouldn't be at work. I knew I couldn't do it. I wanted to work on every patient and I went to work no hair face broke out in blisters it didn't matter like I was gonna be there because I needed to do it for myself that's how you feel better by doing things for yourself